Hello everyone, this is Debbie with Debbie CKE. I'm here today to share with you my recipe for caramel. I use one recipe to make all of these delicious recipes. I use my caramel recipe on my caramel pecan cheesecake. I use it to make um, caramel pecan clusters. I use it to make my caramel pecan sweet rolls. I use it to make my chocolate covered caramels. And I use it to cover my brownies. And I use a lighter version of it to do a lighter caramel on other sweet rolls. So in a moment, I'll set up and I'll share with you my recipe where you can use the same recipe to um, various different dishes where you would use caramel. I'm going to show you an easy all-in-one pot recipe. Um, the instructions are simple. The cooking is simple. You don't need any special tools. And you'll be able to use this caramel recipe to enhance your desserts and add to your menu offerings at home. Um, if you're interested in this idea of learning one particular dessert item to expand on your dessert menu, you can visit me at www.debbycke.com. That's the website. And you can click on the blog where I have a writing there about uh, building your dessert recipe, your dessert menu from one recipe. Okay, I'm going to go off camera and then I'll be right back with a setup so we can begin making our caramel. Okay, guys, here's what we need to make the caramel. We need a quarter cup of packed brown sugar. We need a cup and a half of white granulated sugar. We need a half a cup of heavy whipping cream and one cup of evaporated milk and half a stick of butter. Um, I've never tried it before, but I'm guessing you can use margarine if you don't want to use the butter. Okay, this is a one pot recipe. So basically I'll be just dumping everything into this pot here. Okay, um, you have to sort of judge the size of this pot. I don't know offhand the size of this pot, but you would be safe to use a large pot because when the caramel begins to cook, it'll boil up. It may get this high in this pot and you don't want caramel boiling all over your stove. It's a messy cleanup. Okay, so I'm going to begin by adding my ingredients to the pot. This is a cup and a half of white sugar, my quarter cup of brown sugar, my cup of evaporated milk, and a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. The half cup marking is in this one cup, so I'll be using the same one. Okay, and there we are with our half a cup of heavy whipping cream. I don't usually add the butter until my ingredients begin to cook and boil up. Then I add half a stick of my butter. So give me one moment and I will clear off this area and we'll get started. Okay, I'm back you guys. So I have all the ingredients that I showed you that I put into the pot. We're now going to put this pot 
on the eye and we're going to put it on high. So the entire time the caramel is cooking, the heat needs to be on high. Okay, you have all of your ingredients clumped up in the pot. So you need to stir all of these together to help dissolve the sugar. You don't want to allow your sugar to cook just in a clump in the pot. So you're just going to stir this for a little bit to help dissolve the sugar. Remember, cook on high. Okay, and when this begins to boil up, I will add in my butter. It could take six minutes for the pot to begin to boil. So I will be back once my ingredients start to boil up. Okay, you can see that the caramel has already began to boil. So I'm just going to stir it. It's really essential at this point that you keep a close eye on this pot because you may need to adjust the temperature down to keep the pot from boiling over. Even though we're cooking on high, we may need to quickly turn it down or take it off the heat to keep it from boiling over because we don't want a mess on the stove. So now that my caramel is boiling, at this point, I'm going to add my half a stick of butter. Um, you guys, please be careful when you're adding butter to this pot because you don't want to splash up and have caramel getting on your arms or hands or in your face because it'll cause a serious burn. Okay, so I've put in my caramel. Now I'm just going to stir this for a little bit. One other thing, which, well, two other items which I forgot to mention in the intro um, that you need for making caramel a uh, trusty candy thermometer and vanilla. My vanilla is in this big jar because I make my own vanilla because I use a lot of vanilla extract in my recipes and it became ultra expensive. Um, so I started making my own vanilla just to um, because I didn't want to be paying those expensive prices for four ounces or eight ounces of vanilla. If you use vanilla, pure vanilla extract, then you know what I'm talking about. It's very expensive. So you can see this is a batch that I made earlier in the spring of this year. If you guys would like me to do a video on how to make your own vanilla, I'll be more than happy to do that. Um, vanilla, I usually add a splash in the beginning um, and then three tablespoons at the end because I like my caramel to have a nice vanilla and butter flavor. Um, it's essential that you add your extract at the end because the cooking process could sort of interfere with the flavor of the vanilla. So you add your extract at the end. I add a splash in the beginning and three tablespoons at the end. Um, right now it's boiling. I have no idea what the temperature is at. I want my temperature for this caramel to get up to around 232 or 234, which is um, the softball. If you have a candy thermometer, it's probably a little more clear than me showing you mine. But I like my caramel to be softball. This is an all-purpose caramel, and I call it all-purpose because I use it in several different recipes. If I'm making caramel candy, if I'm making caramel brownies, caramel pecan cheesecake, whatever, I always use the same recipe. There, I don't switch between recipes. 
the thickness of the caramel is depending on how high you cook it. If you remember from the thermometer, if you get up to 260, the caramel will be really hard. If you want chewable, delicious caramels, you don't want your caramel that hard, but I guess it depends on you and your matter of choice. You may want your caramels that hard. I like a chewy caramel and caramel for drizzling brownies and desserts. I only want my caramel to get up to maybe 234, 236, and then I began cooling it down by immersing the pan in some cold water in the sink so that it doesn't um, cook too high and then the caramel is hard. Now, if your caramel does become hard, you can always thin it down by adding, uh, taking out a small portion of it and adding a little evaporated milk to it and recooking it again. So if it comes out hard, it's not a total loss. Um, so if you're trying out this recipe at home, don't be afraid. Um, if your caramel comes out hard, um, don't throw it away. Save it. Um, you can send me a message and I'll do a video on how to thin out your caramel. Um, basically, it's pretty simple. You're just adding a little bit more milk, allowing it to cook, and then taking the temperature back to that 232 34, 36, it depends on where you want the temperature. Okay, so now I'm going to put the thermometer in the caramel so I can check the temperature of the caramel. It's essential that you're using your thermometer properly. And in this casing that it is in, there are two strips over here, but this thermometer can slide up and down. When you're taking the temperature of something in your pot, you want to make sure that this red part of the thermometer is not equal with this base here. If it is, you're going to be taking the temperature of the pot and not of the liquid. So it's important that you make sure that your thermometer is in the correct position like in this little area, I have a good idea of where it should be because of this little area here. I can see the space. Um, let me stir this. Remember, you're still on high, so this is not the point in the cooking process where you want to step away because the caramel will be not done, not done, not done, and then like that, it's done, it's burning, so you don't want that. So just keep a close eye on the pan. Okay, I have my thermometer in and let's see. You won't be able to see, but I'll tell you what temperature it's at. And if you get one of these thermometers that attaches to the pan, you can continue to stir. If not, keep you a little plate or spoon holder on the stove and you'll have to keep taking it in and out and stirring your pot because it's at this point in the cooking process where the caramel could very well begin to burn. So you, it's necessary for you to keep stirring. So currently we're at 222 on the temperature. So I'm going to come back when my caramel is at least at 230, so you can get a look at what's going on there. As you can see, it's still pretty liquidy, but you can see how it's bubbling. Okay, but we'll be back when it's a little hotter and ready for me to... Take it off the stove. Okay, guys, we're back. The caramel temperature is at 232, so we're almost there. 
I'm going to let this caramel cook a little bit longer, probably to 236, because I want the caramel to be a little firmer. You can adjust, when you have a caramel or a candy thermometer, you can decide based on your experience. After you do this a couple of times, you'll be fine at it and you'll learn how to trust your thermometer. Um, you'll learn at what temperature will yield the caramel that's the texture that you like. I want my caramel to be firm and hold its shape but I don't want it to be hard. As you can see, my caramel has changed colors. It's no longer that light brown color that it was when we began. I vary my caramel color. Sometimes I like a deeper, richer brown, sometimes a lighter brown, and sometimes a medium brown. To me, the deeper the color, the deeper the flavor. Um, but I don't, for this, um, for this portion that I'm making, I don't want my caramel to be really dark. You can adjust how dark your caramel gets by adjusting the amount of butter you put in here because it's really the butter that's browning the sugar and that causes those changes in color that you like. So of course, if you want a very light tan color caramel, only use a tablespoon of butter because I like my caramel to be buttery and rich in flavor. I use four tablespoons of butter and I let it cook longer because I like the color and I like the flavor of the vanilla and the butter. Okay, so a couple more degrees and then I'll start cooling off my pot in the sink of cold water. That's how I do it. Um, when you begin cooling the caramel, you could just let it sit on the stove and cool by itself. I don't usually do that. I like to see what my texture of my caramel is while it's made or being making at the time because I don't want when I need caramel to discover that something went wrong and the texture of the caramel is not what I wanted. So that's why I cool my caramel while I'm making it and I don't allow it to just cool by itself and just trust that it's going to um, stop at the temperature that I want. So I'm gonna turn off the stove now because we're close to 236. So of course, be careful. This is hot caramel while you're making this. You may want to use a splatter shield over your pot because this caramel will be popping all over the place and you don't want it to get in your eye. Of course, I'm not worried at this point because I've been splashed before. <laughs> um, nothing serious, um, but yes, I have been splashed. And then my eyes are protected because I wear glasses. So this is what the caramel looks right now. It's still pretty watery, as you can see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cool this off in the sink with some cold water, submerging the pot, not the caramel, just the outside of the pot. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how drastically the texture and the thickness of the car caramel has changed. Okay guys, this is what the caramel looks like after six minutes of cooling in a cold water bath in the sink. I just wanted you guys to get a look at 
how the texture or thickness of the caramel has changed just from cooling in the water bath. As it continues to cool down more and more, it'll become thicker and thicker. Thus, that's why I had to change to a spoon to stir it. Um, because it's going to become thicker and thicker. So I'll be back in another maybe six minutes to show you the difference in the texture. Okay, you guys. I almost forgot to add the vanilla while I was so busy cooling down the caramel. So you definitely want to get that vanilla in there before your caramel sets up. It should have gone in before I put it in the water bath, but it's fine. Oh, I just want to show you how thick the caramel has become. It's a little thinner now because I've added in the vanilla, but that's not a problem. It will still thicken up further. As you can see, it's a little bit difficult to stir. That's why your vanilla should go in directly as you finish at, before you cool your caramel and directly after it finishes cooking but this will be fine um, this will set up this will make a delicious drizzling on brownies sweet rolls I can also use the same recipe to make caramel candy um, this is the same caramel I use to top my pecan cheesecakes, pecan caramel cheesecakes. And as you guys see, this is a great recipe. It's easy to do. It's one pot. It's not a bunch of measuring. It doesn't require that much skill. It's like someone at the beginning level of cooking can do this. It's just a matter of keeping an eye on your temperatures not allowing it to burn things like that okay you guys so that's it for this recipe video i need to get this caramel out of this pan before it sets up if perchance you should decide to cool your caramel by just leaving it covered on the stove and it becomes difficult and hard to get out of the pan. All you have to do is just turn your stove on low for maybe 40 seconds, maybe a little less, just to get it to warm up the bottom and you'll be able to take it out of the pan. However, I don't wanna go through all of that. While it's soft, I wanna get it out of this pan and get it into a container for storage. This caramel stores for a long period of time in your freezer. All you have to do is put it in a covered Tupperware container and put it in your freezer. If you know you want to use some, you take it out of the freezer, allow it to come to room temperature, and take out a small portion that you want to use to make um, whatever you're making. Um, to reheat it, you just put it in a pot, put a little low heat on it, and keep stirring it, and you can use it for drizzling or whatever your recipe calls for. Um, if you're having an issue with burning, it's because when you're reheating, it's because your temperature is too hot. Um, another trick you can use when you're reheating your caramel from the refrigerator is to put a little bit of evaporated milk into the pan and then allow that to warm up a little bit and put your caramel in there and it should melt with no problem. Others can use a double broiler. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's basically you have a pot of boiling water and you put a bowl that covers the mouth of the pot and you melt the caramel that way, but don't allow the water that's boiling to touch 
the container and use a glass or metal container. Don't use plastic. It's going to melt. You'll have a mess. <laughs> or for those of you who want another method of um, reheating your caramel, give me one second and I'll show you an easy trick. You can buy one of these gadgets on Amazon or you might find it at Restaurant Supply. Basically, I use this for melting chocolates, melting caramel, whatever I need to do when I'm heating small portions of food. You have your pot of boiling water. You just place some of your caramel inside and hang it on the edge of the pot and you just stir it and it'll melt and it won't be a problem. Okay, that's it for this video, guys. If you have any comments, please comment down below. If you have any suggestions for other videos, let me know, and I'll try to squeeze them in. Thank you.